Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destinations better. Before we start, I just want to take a minute and kind of explain the process that I go through for these videos. I'll ask a bunch of people, locals, natives, and visitors alike, what kinds of authentic things people should try when they go to these places. So without further ado, let's go over the top 10 foods for the Caribbean island of St. Martin. The number 10 spot goes to the Austrian pastry, the croissant. But not just any croissant, today we're talking almond. Croissants are iconically buttery, flaky, and soft. They get their flakiness, their butteriness, and their poofiness from thin layers of yeast dough that are brushed with butter in between each layer. And although many think they're from France, they actually got their start in Austria. But then an Austrian baker emigrated to France and started up his own bakery there. The bakery became very popular, and ever since then, they've become a French staple, making their way onto the partially French island of Saint Martin. For an almond croissant, picture a plain croissant with an almond paste filling, baked and topped with some shaved almonds, maybe a healthy sprinkling of powdered sugar. These things are definitely sweet. Breakfast done right. The number nine spot on our list goes to the Island Time Brewski, Carib. This beer is extremely popular on the island of St. Martin, but it's gonna be brewed off the island on nearby Trinidad, St. Kitts and Nevis, or Granada. These are the islands where the beer is actually made. Carib is a lager that's best enjoyed ice cold. It has a malty aroma and a matching taste. It's slightly sweet and slightly bitter and leaves behind a sweet and malty kind of aftertaste. It's a light and crisp spirit that's supposed to be smooth and very easy to drink. Who needs a beach day brewski? A local fish with a large mouth and a stout body. The first swimmer on our list goes to the grouper. This fish can be gigantic, the largest recorded weighing in at 880 pounds. And to be that big, I'm sure they need a pretty substantial diet. This fish will actually eat other fish, octopi, or crustaceans, and whatever it eats, it can eat whole. This fish is a beast. Taste-wise, many compare it to a combination of bass and halibut, but with over 400 different species, each one is going to be slightly different. Grilled, baked, broiled, fried are some of the different ways you'll find this fish prepared. Grilled is my vote. The next spot on our list goes to the Caribbean Johnny Cake. First made by the indigenous people of the Americas, the Johnny Cake can be compared to a cornmeal pancake, with many variations being found along the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean. Each region's Johnny Cake is gonna be slightly different. These non-leavened discs of deliciousness are mostly eaten for breakfast, but you can also find them as a side dish for lunch and dinner, but really, you can eat them any time of day, no problem. And similar to a pancake, they kind of follow the same same eating style, being topped with butter, honey, or some kind of a syrup. For lunch or dinner, they might be eaten a little different, maybe on the side of some slow-cooked BBQ, or even as the, the bread for a sandwich. And by pan frying these, they're left crispy on the outside and buttery soft on the inside. The number six spot goes to another fish, the red snapper. This fish is native to the Western Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, especially in places with really rocky substrates, and St. Martin makes the cut. This fish's diet consists of other fish, crabs, shrimp, and tiny guys like zooplankton and cephalopods. And this one is most commonly caught wild. There aren't too many fisheries devoted to it anywhere. This fish has a firmer texture and leans a little bit to the sweeter side and is also slightly nutty. The fishy flavor is very low key here, and there's actually a lot of young children that enjoy eating red snapper. You'll most likely find this one grilled, broiled, pan fried, or even deep fried, crunch. Number five goes to the conch. Indigenous to the Caribbean Sea, the queen conch is the sea snail that we think of when we think mollusk St. Martin meals. The conch lives in warm, shallow waters, seagrass beds, and reefs throughout the Caribbean, and has a mouthfeel similar to clams, but a little bit firmer and a little bit sweeter. They can really be used interchangeably. And here in St. Martin, conch chowder or conch fritters are this sea creature's claim to fame. Now, let's talk sustainability. The queen 
Queen conch is a very slow grower and doesn't reach maturity for a, for a while. Because of this and its dish's popularity, they are extremely susceptible to overfishing. So when in St. Martin, we recommend limiting your conch dishes to one conch dish per person per trip. The oceans will thank you. Number four goes to the guava berry colada, one of St. Martin's most delicious frozen cocktails. Before doing research for this video, I didn't think there was a difference between guava berries and guava, but there is. Guavas are a two to four inch round fruit that can either be white or red on the inside, and a very unique taste and aroma that's synonymous with island-inspired candle fragrances. Guava berries, on the other hand, are about half the size of a cherry with a tiny pit on the inside. They can be dark red or purple or various degrees of like a yellow orange color. And although the guava berry is a little bit sweeter than a guava, they have a very similar tanginess. These berries are what's used to make the spirit that St. Martin is really known for guava berry liqueur. This spirit is very popular mostly amongst tourists but also locals for more special occasions. And it's the national liqueur of St. Martin, so we have to try it, right? Now the guava berry colada is a riff on your classic pina colada. The only difference is the rum is removed from the pina colada and replaced with this guava berry liqueur, leaving you with a coconut pineapple guava berry purple concoction that I really wish I had right now. This beverage will hands down reinforce your moment in paradise. The number three spot. Island life, relaxation, and a little bit of tiki. Rum sets the mood proper. This spirit is made by fermenting the juice of sugarcane or molasses and can be found in a spectrum of different grades, colors, and types. The three most common varieties of rum that one might find are white rum, gold rum, and dark rum. White rum is clear in color and will get along with most mixers or you can put it really with anything. Gold rum is white rum that's been aged in barrels, giving it that golden amber kind of color. This aging process makes the rum develop a noticeably more intense rum flavor without being too funky. If you're looking to step up the rum flavor in whatever you're making, try gold rum out. Now to classify something as a dark rum, it's exceptionally vague. The differentiator between white and gold rum is that aging process and the color. And with dark rum, as long as it's darker in color, it's considered dark rum. This is whether it falls in a deep gold amber category or nearly black, it's all dark. Dark rum. To get this color, just like the golden rum, they need to be aged. And kind of a rule of thumb, the darker in color you go, the longer they've probably been aged for and the funkier the flavor is going to get. The darker the rum, the funkier the flavor. So in general, when you think of the flavor of this spirit, think different degrees of toasted sugar and funk. Some of the more popular rum cocktails that one might encounter include pina coladas, rum punches, or mai tais. Topper's rum is local, it's found on the island, and definitely worth a try. They have all different kinds of flavors and types, ranging from white rum to crazy flavors, like spiced rum, coconut rum, or even banana, but there's, there's other ones than that too. You'll also notice a lot of rum liqueurs by Old Man Guava Berry that are definitely worth a try. I really like the almond one. Try them out. The number two spot goes to barbecue spare ribs. On St. Martin, it's almost guaranteed that you will smell these before you even have the chance to sink your teeth in. When driving around the island, you're most likely gonna pass these little roadside low lows. These are out in the open, roadside, barbecue, smelling, delicious, cooking gems that you need to experience. When the recipe is handed down from generation to generation, they are a must if you are on the island of St. Martin. And ribs are pretty common. You can find them in a number of places, but I would definitely try the Lolo. And the most common ribs you'll find are slow cooked, they are barbecue, and they're gonna be slathered in a sauce that's sweet, tangy, maybe a little spicy. Oh yeah. The number one spot for St. Martin food goes to the spiny lobster. 
This crustacean is pretty abundant in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea. We're talking really local here. But if we compare the spiny lobster to its more commonly recognized New England cousin, we'll notice many visual differences. The biggest thing you'll see is that these don't have those iconic main lobster claws, but they do have two really big antenna. And overall, they're just scarier looking. Compared to the New England variety, the spiny lobster is also going to have a milder sweetness and a little bit tougher of a texture. And since the spiny doesn't have those iconic claws, you're going to find most of the meat in its tail. One can enjoy this lobster simply grilled, or if you're feeling a little bit more fancy, you can indulge in a plate of lobster thermidor, one of the most recommended dishes to try. Lobster thermidor gets its popularity from the island's French roots. The lobster is cut right down the middle, split open. The meat is actually removed, the guts are gutted, and then the meat is cooked in a rich wine sauce that's put back into the shell. Nice, no waste. Now the sauce that the lobster's cooked in is made with egg yolks and brandy. This refilled lobster shell is now put back into the oven to melt the healthy sprinkling of Gruyere cheese that was put on top. Well, there you have it guys, the top 10 foods for the island of St. Martin. If you enjoyed this video or got any kind of value from it, please consider liking it or subscribing to the channel. We're new here and it would help me out a lot. If you've been to St. Martin and have had different experiences, please let us know in the comments and I need your help. We all need your help because we can't do it alone. Let us know what your top foods are for St. Martin. Let us know if there's anything you wanna to add to this list. Let us know if there's any places to get any of these things. But until next time, travel well.